QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Chart of Accounts. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list. We're now going to be talking about the chart of accounts. The chart of accounts is kind of like the backbone to all of the other things that we're going to be setting up and therefore many of the or the main component of the chart of accounts or at least some starting point of the chart of accounts will need to be done before we process any of the activity the transactions as we have seen in like the vendor section the customer section the employee section in other words these forms that we have put together have been affecting the financial statements balance sheet and income statement in some way shape or form and those balance sheet and income statements are populated or formatted through the chart of accounts so when you're starting a new company file then of course you're going to have to set up the chart of accounts and be familiar with the chart of accounts if you're going into a company file that has already been set up which is basically what we have been practicing here the chart of accounts will have already been set up for the most part you might have to add some accounts now and again but once the chart of accounts is set up then it's going to be somewhat repetitive. The accounting of process will be somewhat repetitive after that point in time. And you can kind of copy what was done in the past as we enter these transactions, which should be somewhat routine at that point in time. So we'll actually go through the company setup process when we go through the second half of the course to actually run through the uh, practice file and setting up a, a new company and adding two months worth of data to it. Let's take a look at the chart of accounts now. Note that it's going to be under the lists here. So when you look at the desktop version, that's going to be one of the major things that people will, will categorize under the term lists, which is kind of a QuickBooks term, not so much an accounting in general term. You can also find it in the homepage in the chart of accounts over here. I like going to the drop down because the drop down, you can find the drop down no matter where you are in the system. The chart of accounts will differ from company to company, but can be somewhat standardized from industry to industry. And therefore, when you set up the company file, QuickBooks will ask you what type of industry you are in. For example, this company file, we said that we did have inventory in particular, and then QuickBooks will put together a chart of accounts that will be related to that industry. It'll probably have more information than you need, more accounts than you need possibly. Uh, if you're a smaller company or it might not have some of the specialty accounts that you need, but you can get a good idea of the industry accounts that would be standardized for that industry. And that's a great starting point to move forward with. Now you can uh, create a, a new company file and not choose an, an, an or tell QuickBooks, hey, look, I don't want a chart of accounts in essence, and then create the chart of accounts from scratch, which can be nice as well, because then you can basically customize your chart of accounts. Problem with that is, however, Many people get messed up with the account types over here. So it's nice to basically, I would recommend starting off with what QuickBooks provides for you as the industry chart of accounts. So you can get an idea of what the industry standards are. And if you're building the company file from scratch, then the general rule would be if I'm entering a transaction, I'm first going to look and see whether that tran transaction has an account related to it before I add a new one. And then if it does have an account related to it, I will use it. If I don't like the name particularly, and I think it would be named a little bit differently, then I will go into here and adjust the name rather than adding a new account because you don't want this thing to get too extensive and overwhelming. And then if, it, if I just don't have an account, for example, if I have a specific expense account down here that's not included, then I'll go ahead after having looked, include a new expense account that is good or I think is relevant to my particular uh, industry. After you've entered a couple months of data, then you can go through this chart of account and start to say, hey, look, there's some accounts that I'm not using and you can go in and trim it down. You can delete some of the accounts that you are not using. And that's how I would that's how I would approach the chart of accounts basically for a new company file. If you are continuing on with a continuing company file and you had a prior accounting or bookkeeper or accountant before that, then you probably want to be consistent with what the prior bookkeeper was doing at least for a bit and then gradually change to to make the new adjustments that you want so that you have that consistency from uh, period to period. So the chart of accounts is a list of the accounts and these are the accounts that will actually be used when you enter transactions such as as we go back to the home page, the bills, the pay bills, the enter invoices. These transactions will generally be then assigned to a chart of accounts and then be used to create the financial statements, balance sheet and income statement. Going back then to the chart of accounts, 
the the confusing part about the charge of accounts is typically going to be the account type over here so most people have an idea of of the accounts that will be set up but then they may not really understand like what type of account they should be going under and that's why this is going to be useful also note that you might have account numbers uh, with the chart of accounts uh, the default for quickbooks is not to include account numbers Account numbers are great because they give you more flexibility. We might talk about account numbers after the practice problem, but we're going to stick with the default of not including account numbers first because the account numbers can be, you can, you can mess things up if you don't understand the account numbers or how to assign account numbers. And therefore, uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with them, it may be best just not to use the account numbers and then it'll use alphabetical order within certain categories. So then if we, if we look at over on the, on the right side, we have the type. Notice that by default, it'll be sorted by type. And I really would keep that as the default. You could sort it by name. So if you were looking for a particular item, you could sort it by name over here. But by type, I think is really the best way to sort. You also have a lookup table, which is kind of nice. So if you were looking for a particular expense account, like the telephone or something, or a particular account in any in any case it'll it'll basically do that search field that's a relatively new feature actually to have to have the search in there and i'm going to reset okay reset so so then within the account types notice it's going to be in order by basically the balance sheet and then the income statements that's how i would first try to think of the account types so if you were to just stack the balance sheet on top of the income statement that's basically how the account types will be set up. So in other words, let's open up our financials. I'm going to go to the reports drop down company and financial open up the balance sheet standard and let's change the dates up. Actually, let's let's do the summary about now I'll keep the standard. I'll go to customize and we'll change the dates from 010121 to 123121 and say OK balance sheet. Let's open the profit profit and loss report reports drop down company and financial and then we'll take a look at the profit and loss standard. So that's going to be from 010121 to 123121. And then I'm going to open up one more we haven't met, possibly seen thus far. That's going to be the trial balance, which basically looks like the chart of accounts. It's going to be ordered in, in essence the same way, but it's going to actually include the account numbers at that point in time. It does have debits and credits, which if you're not familiar with debits and credits can be confusing. But even if you don't use the debits and credits, trial balance down here in reports, accounting and taxes, trial balance. I highly recommend and we will see it as we go through the practice problem 12. This is going to be as of 010121 to 123121. There's going to be our trial balance. Basically it looks like the chart of accounts in form form, <laughs> but uh, then it has the numbers as of that point in time. So if you look at the balance sheet, uh, notice how it's set up. If, if we were to kind of minimize everything, this is how you want to think about the, the ordering of the accounts, assets, liabilities, then equity. And then if you go to the profit and loss, then I'm going to say uh, income and expenses. That's basically the order that you have. If you just put the balance sheet on top of the income statement, that's how you want to think about the ordering of the accounts. So balance sheet, assets, liabilities, equity, and then income statement is going to be the, the income, uh, and income and then expenses. So that's going to be the, the typical kind of, kind of breakout. And then you have the subcategorizations. And these subcategorizations and what we're talking about here, if I go back to the chart of accounts, we're talking about these types. So banking type, uh, receivable, these are all types of assets. So within the subcategory of assets, you have these, these assets that are in there by basically the liquidity of the asset. So you could see that in the reports, if you were to say it's going to be stacking up the reports within the assets, we then have uh, the asset types which are going to include the current assets and that includes these are the types so right the, the types are then going to break out in these little expander areas so within the current assets you have the checking account so that's going to be the checking account type which is an asset type of account so when we set up a new account if it's a checking account we got to assign it to a checking account type or bank type and then we got the accounts receivable that's an account type it needs to be broken out separately because the accounts receivable will be tracking the sub ledgers and then we've got other current assets. Every other current asset uh, would be here. Total current assets and then the fixed assets or depreciable assets, property, plant, and equipment then down here. So these are the subcategory types of uh, assets. And then, then the liabilities and equity. If I was to collapse all uh, these items, we got 
Uh, hold on a second. Just the liabilities and equity I wanted to undo here. So then we got the liabilities and within liabilities, we've got the current liabilities. Within the current liabilities, we've got the types. These are the types, the accounts payable type of account, credit card type of account. There's another format of a liability type, other current liabilities, everything else that's a liability that doesn't fall into these top two types and sales tax liability. And then within equity, these are all equity type of accounts. And then on the income statement, we're, we're going to have the types of income type of accounts, cost of goods sold type of accounts, which is a type of expense, and then expense type of account, uh, other expense type of accounts down here, and then other income and expenses, things that are outside the norm of the usage. So that's the general layout basically for the chart of accounts. So when you create a new chart of account, most of the time, once the chart of accounts has already been set up, your balance sheet is usually pretty good and you're thinking about whether or not you need to add like an expense account when you're when you're paying your bills and whatnot. You're saying, all right, well, the checking account's going down because I'm paying a bill. And then you're going to think about adding, do I need another expense account? That's what often happens uh, when and you're and and to do that, I would first look at the expenses and see whether we have an expense account. If we do, use it. If it's a name that you don't quite like, then you can adjust it and you can adjust these by right clicking on them and going to new. Or you can click on them, go to the account drop down, which is really a rise up, and then go to the new here. And then, I'm sorry, not new there. We're going to go to the rise up and edit the account. And then here's, here's going to be the setup for that particular account. You can just simply change the name up top if you so choose. We'll talk about sub accounts at a later point in time as well. Tax information is down below. Uh, this can be useful, but it hasn't really played out to be as useful unless you're using tax, tax software that connects directly to uh, the QuickBooks system. So that could become useful, but I, I'm not seeing it quite yet. Notice that these accounts are sub accounts of a depreciable account here. And you'll see how that plays out on the income statement. If you if you go to the profit and loss report, the, the it made another little drop down. So I got the expense, which is a drop down by type. And then within there, we have this other sub account, which breaks out another little breakout such as that. So some people really like sub accounts. You can get carried away with the use of sub accounts. The way to create a sub account is if I right click on this and I edit the account here. Uh, you click on this item and make it a sub account. We'll see that as we go through the practice problem. We'll, we'll set up these sub accounts, of course, uh, as, we, as we go. So uh, note that uh, as you enter data, as well, if you go into the home tab and you're entering something like a check and uh, you don't have the expense account down here, you can add the account as you go. You can add an account. This would simply be adding the expense account to the chart of accounts. I won't do it here, but note you, you can basically build your chart of accounts as you go. And if you're familiar with creating the chart of accounts, that can be a good way to go because you can actually say, hey, QuickBooks, I don't want you to give me a chart of accounts. And then you can just build your chart of accounts and have the minimal amount of, account, of accounts you need as you move forward. Notice that when QuickBooks makes this chart of accounts, you probably have more accounts than you will actually use. And it, that can be confusing. Because if I look at something like the trial balance over here, this is the trial balance, basically has the chart of accounts. The accounts that have not been used aren't going to show up here, right? They're not going to be here, even though those accounts are on our GL. So you might want to then, again, after a couple months of data input or maybe a year even, check out what accounts you have used and which accounts you have not used, maybe after your tax preparation, after you've had your accountant review it and whatnot. And, and then you can go back to the chart of accounts and any accounts you have not used, you can remove them. So you can have as few accounts in here as possible that you need to record the transactions so that it doesn't get confusing. It's, it's more likely that you pick up the wrong expense account and then your matching is not quite right if, if you're picking up different expense accounts. So it's, it's nice to have just what you need in here. Also note that if you want, you, if you uh, do not want to delete an account, possibly it has activity in it or you're just kind of worried about deleting them, you can make them inactive as well. So I can, I can edit this account and I can say, I, I want to make it uh, inactive. And if I make it inactive, then it'll kind of, it won't show up here unless I search for the, the items that are, that are active and inactive. This little check mark 
would have to be checked off. It's not, it's gray here because I don't have any inactive accounts. But if I had inactive accounts, then this little check mark would have to be checked off to see the inactive accounts. And then you can basically reactivate them at that point. Now, if you want to turn on account numbers, you'd have to go to the edit tab up top and go down to the preferences. And then you want to go to accounting and the company preferences tab. And then you have the use account number. So if you click on that item, it'll turn on uh, your account numbers and you could start to track the account numbers. The reason those can be useful, notice what happens if I don't have account numbers. If I go to the trial balance here, you'll see that this is an order just like we said. It's, a, it's, a, it's an order by type and then it's an order, it's an order by balance sheet on top of the income statement, assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. And then it's an order by the type of, of asset, liability, equity, income, and expense. So we have the cash accounts and then we have the accounts receivable accounts and so on. On the income statement, for example, you'll see that we have a, a, the, the biggest category is usually expenses, right? So if you, if you look down here on the expenses side of things, then it's in order within the expenses. These are all expenses from, from the bank service charge depreciation on down. It's in order within that category in alphabetical order. So the entire thing is not in alphabetical order, but within it's in order by type, by account type. But within each account type, the largest category of account type being expenses, it's in alphabetical order. Now that could be good or it could be bad. Uh, you, you might want to order this in some other way. You might want to have more control to order them in here. And to do that, you can use account numbers. But if you use account numbers and you assign like, like an, an account number that's out of, out of order, like let's say I assign the account number for the checking account to be uh, 5,000 and the check and the account number for an expense account or cost of goods sold to be 1,000, you would think cost of goods sold would then be ordered before the checking account. But that not necessarily the case. QuickBooks will still order by type first and then account number. So, so if you misuse the account numbers, then it can be look really weird. The account numbers can be basically out of order uh, in that format. So you want to be careful there. Another example of this, and we dealt with that if I go to the balance sheet on uh, the asset side, under these fixed assets, we set up these uh, sub accounts. And within here, you got these are both fixed asset type of accounts. The first one's accumulated depreciation, the second one's equipment. Accumulated depreciation should be under equipment typically, because the equipment is like the parent account and this, this one below is, is basically tied to it. But because they're both in the same category and this one starts with an A, it happens to be on top. If we used account numbers, we would be able to, to adjust that. So we'll talk a little bit more about, the, about that as we go. Again, uh, we're not gonna go into account numbers on uh, the practice problem, but we might touch into it on how you, how you can go about adding the account numbers you know, more carefully and thoughtfully after the entire practice problem. But by default, it'll still be in order by account type on your trial balance and financial statements. And then within the account types, as we saw with the expenses, it will then be in order by, uh, by, the, by the alphabetical order in general.